Star Wars 7x7 episode 2,482. Well, the embargo is up. It's over and it's time to check in on a non-spoiler review of the second novel in this latest Thrawn trilogy, which is Star Wars colon Thrawn Ascendancy colon Greater Good. Punch it. <laughs> Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So Thrawn Ascendancy Part 2 Greater Good is coming out a week from today on April 27th and thanks very much to the fine folks at Del Rey. I've had a chance to read the book prior to its release and that's what we're going to get to on this non-spoiler review. And here is the full description of the book. It says Thrawn's latest triumph, that's the one from Chaos Rising, the previous book in this trilogy, still rests newly on his shoulders. He has led the chist of victory and brought glory to the house of myth, but the true threat to the ascendancy has not yet been extinguished. Their foes do not send threats or ultimatums, do not mass ships on the edge of the chaos. Their weapons come cloaked in smiles and generosity, gifts offered freely, services granted unconditionally. And then it goes on to say, Across the Ascendancy, seemingly inconsequential events could herald the doom of the Chiss. As Thrawn and the expansionary defense fleet rally to uncover the plot, they discover a chilling truth. Rather than invade Chiss capitals or pillage resources, their enemy strikes at the very foundation of the Ascendancy, seeking to widen the rifts between the nine ruling families and the forty great houses below. As rivalry and suspicion sow discord among allies, each warrior must decide what matters most to them, the security of their family or the survival of the Ascendancy itself. And just to be clear, that description is exactly what you find on Amazon right now. And it's also exactly the description in the book jacket itself. So it really does kind of lay out what happens in the novel, at least from a structural standpoint. But as far as the particulars and the details, well, yeah, obviously that is left to the imagination and the reading itself. And much like a situation where Thrawn has himself limited information and yet is able to judge the strengths and weaknesses of an opponent, well, <laughs> by that, you can kind of judge the strengths and weaknesses of the book itself. But then again, I have the benefit of having read the thing and being able to look at hindsight at that description and tell you that one of the strengths of the novel is the fact that it doesn't necessarily focus entirely on Thrawn, right? He is certainly a main character in the novel, but not necessarily even the main character. And I would argue that there are a couple of main characters of sorts that each have their own stories that need to be pursued, and ultimately they do tie together. And that's a good thing because as far as Thrawn goes, there's still not much in the way of growth for the character in the sense that every challenge with which he's faced he's able to come up with a solution and as with previous Thrawn stories there are a lot of moments where you know people around him either don't believe him or say this is just too insane or crazy to work and yet they go along with him anyway and of course it works out. The one flaw in Thrawn, the one hole in his armor that is presented to us once again in the novel is that he is utterly inept at politics, that he is completely incapable of factoring in political machinations into any of his decisions, and yet that doesn't come into play. In other words, the fact that he's inept at politics does not end up really causing him any issues or creating the kind of conflict or the kind of failure that would allow him to grow as a character. Now circling back to strength, so the description talks about inconsequential events that are building up to spell doom for the Ascendancy and if you were in a less capable storyteller's hands then you might find yourself growing a little bit <laughs> bored or wearisome as these events build up. However, Timothy Zahn does very well with not only interspersing this inconsequential building of events with other things happening in other areas, like for example, Thrawn and Aralani and Senior Captain Lakinda of the Grey Shrike 
uh, having to go off on their own missions and still having battle encounters. So there is a lot of ship to ship combat in between the building of the story of these inconsequential events. And also the same sort of memories interludes between the chapters of the story are also present here as well. The memories chapters were present in the previous Thrawn novel and they tell an earlier part of the story that ultimately is very consequential for the current events part of the story, if you will. And as a reader, not necessarily knowing what was coming as I was going through the book and seeing the various storylines play out and switching back and forth between them, you, know, you do kind of reach a point where you're like, all right, this you <laughs> better start coming together. And it does. And Timothy Zahn gives you, you know, one piece here and one piece there. And almost as if you are a Thrawn or an Aralani yourself, you start to see the dominoes tumbling. And then there is that third act race to, oh, wow, so this is how it's playing out. Also, like any good book that's the second part of a trilogy, it does pick up on some of the threads that were left hanging at the end of the first book. And naturally, it gives you a bit of a tingle about what's going to happen in the final book, which is announced already. It's going to be Thrawn Ascendancy colon Lesser Evil. And that book, as a wonderful surprise, is actually coming out this year. So you don't have to wait for another year to pass by in order to get the conclusion to this trilogy. It's actually coming out on November 16th. Yes, that announcement was made on StarWars.com on April 1st, but it's not an April Fool's joke. It is totally legit. So, final non-spoiler analysis. If you're a fan of Thrawn, if you're a fan of stories that feature Thrawn, then you are going to enjoy this book. If you have not read Chaos Rising, or if you haven't read it in a while, and really want to make sure that you understand everything that's going on in Greater Good, then you will probably be well served by reading Chaos Rising first before you get into Greater Good, or at least finding a really good summary and reading that first because the other players like the Nicodoon and Yiv the Benevolent and the Vagari Pirates and you know all these other factions, many of them do get mentioned again along with new ones as well and it kind of helps a little bit to <laughs> have your bearing, have your grounding in some of that information before you enter into greater good. So yes, again, if you're a Thrawn fan, you will dig it. I do think that it is stronger because of the fact that it doesn't focus entirely on Thrawn. He is not the main focal point of this, although he is certainly a linchpin for the proceedings. And the story of Senior Captain Lakinda I thought was particularly compelling and well done. And there's actually a new excerpt out now that features Senior Captain Lakinda. So yeah, do check that out. I did want to see Thrawn fail at something and learn from it and rise to a greater success. Unfortunately, not really the case. And I did get a little impatient myself waiting for all the plot threads to come together, but that's probably more a reflection on me <laughs> than it is necessarily on the story itself. And we're going to talk a bit more about Thrawn this week, again in a non-spoiler way. But for now, that is going to do it for our non-spoiler look at Star Wars colon Thrawn Ascendancy colon Greater Good, which is the second book in the Thrawn Ascendancy trilogy. And that is going to do it for this episode of the show as well. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always. And may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.